I recently came out. Everything changed for the better. It was a very freeing experience. Then I met Giselle, and I fell in love, and it felt right, you know, like for the first time. And um, I told my parents. That didn't go very well. <laughs> Sorry. My grandmother won't talk to me. She comes from El Salvador, and religion for her was a survival. All she ever really had was prayer, and that's how she got by, but she's using God in a way to hurt me. She openly says, like, that she's ashamed. She says, oh, Dios te va a castigar por ser una maricona. She even told me once, te va a dar como la sida. I'm like, how would you tell me that I'm going to get an illness because I'm like this? Whether you go to church every Sunday or not, you know, it's a part of the culture in a way. And it's also very different. And a lot of the Latinos in LA, they're first generation. So they come from countries that religion really plays a huge role. The way my life has been going, uh, it's been a little bumpy. And she's like, and all this is happening because God is punishing you. And then I told her, why would God, who is supposed to be merciful and loving, punish me for being who, he, you know, that's how he made me. My brothers are very supportive. I remember when I was 16, I told them, you know what, I think I'm different. Christopher, who's the baby of the family, he's just, he's been my rock throughout all of this. Growing up, he would always tell me, like, you're my hero, you know, even in his college applications, you know. Um, He's like writing about how much I've helped him, but he's really helped me because when I'm feeling down, he just comes and he knows and he sits next to me. He's like, you know what? I love you regardless. Or like just hearing him speak up and um, just telling my grandmother, you know what? Leave my sister alone. To have someone who could just hear me out and not judge me, it's great. I had found out that she was hurting herself because she felt depressed about several different things that she had told me. And me being the young brother, I tried to be in there for her, you know, consoling her, but now I've discovered it was because she was getting, she was just, she felt that she had to punish herself. It was about three days after my 16th birthday. My mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and my dad wasn't in my life and I felt like God was punishing me because, um, you know, I was having these inner thoughts and these inner feelings for another girl. I thought that maybe by dating a guy it would make things better, but it just made me feel dirty and really, really sick. And I just, you know, I felt like everything bad that had happened was because I was gay. And I thought that maybe if, you know, I took my life, everything would be better. As I was about to, you know, <laughs> cut myself. Not like in a cutter way, but like in a suicidal way. You know, we had, I had the kitchen knife and I was, I was actually talking to my baby sister who um, passed away uh, several years before. And I was telling her that, you know, I was going to see her and to take care of my brothers. And right where I was going to cut myself, you know, to, <laughs> die. Uh, Christopher walks in. He just bursts the door open, you know, like a, a little brother, like, Bianca! And I just remember the look on his face. And I automatically, you know, hide the knife underneath my pillow. Felt like his energy just drain. The next day, I go speak to my counselor. I didn't tell her the gay part. I didn't even tell the doctors there. You know, I used the whole daddy issues as a cover-up. And, um, you know, I told her that I felt so guilty. Like, on top of the guilt that I already felt, the fact that my bro brother saw me. It was like, what have I done to him, you know? And um, she told my mom, and I was put in the Cerritos Mental Hospital. I couldn't really understand what it really meant to cut yourself. I couldn't really, ex how extreme it could be. But it still did hurt me. My mom was also sad, because I guess my mom kind of took the blame onto herself that my sister did that, that she felt she couldn't be, a, that she wasn't as good as a parent to prevent that. Christopher, if you didn't walk in there 
and just yell out my name, I don't know, you know? I can pretty much tell you I wouldn't be here today. And I'm so grateful <laughs> that you just busted that door open now, you know? And that you saved my life. And I love you so much. <laughs> oh God, come here. He's too big. Oh. No one would choose to live a life that you can't hold your partner's hand in public, you can't show affection, and a lot of people live in fear. We have to open their minds a little bit, especially because it's a culture that it's really not talked about. What really helped my mom, I've been having her watch videos, like, um, because the Bible tells me so, documentaries. And she's seeing up close the fight, you know, and it's taking away this idea that it's a choice. She's slowly starting to open up. Now that I was able to come out, you know, life has gotten better for me. This is a little inside for like actors. When you're super talented, they call you a triple threat because you could sing, act, and dance. Well, I'm a triple threat. I am Latina, I'm queer, and I'm a woman, so yeah. <laughs>